All right, so here's a, another code lab on testing. This is more advanced testing. This is uh, using test doubles and dependency injection. All right, so let me show you where I got this from. Uh, let's see, uh, developer, let me go back. I'll show you, it's on the code labs, Google code labs, search for tests. Uh, make sure Android selected, and then it's this one, 5.2. Introduction to test doubles and dependency injection. Click start. All right. Okay, so this collab is part of the Advanced Android and Kotlin course. You'll get the most value out of this course if you work through the collabs in sequence, but it's not mandatory. All right, let's go let's skip ahead a little. Uh, the second testing collab is all about test doubles, when to use them in Android and how to implement them using dependency injection, the service locator pattern, and libraries. You learn how to write repository unit tests, fragments and view model integration tests, Fragment navigation tests. <clears throat> what you should already know. You should be familiar with testing concept, co concepts covered in the first code lab, which I did in the previous video. Uh, writing and running unit tests on Android using JUnit, Hamcrest, Android X test, RoboElectric, as well as testing live data. <laughs> Following core Android Jetpack libraries, view model, live data, and navigation component. Uh, application architecture following the pattern for from the guide to app architecture and Android fundamentals code lab the basics of coroutines on Android got that what you'll learn how to plan a test strategy how to create and use test doubles namely fakes and mocks how to use manual dependency injection on Android for unit and integration tests how to apply the service locator pattern, <clears throat> how to test repositories, fragments, view models, and the navigation component. You will use the following libraries and code concepts, run blocking, run blocking test, fragment scenario, espresso. What you'll do, write unit tests for a repository using a test double and dependency injection, write unit tests for a view model using a test double and dependency injection, write integration tests for fragments and their view models using espresso, UI testing framework, write navigation tests using Makito and Espresso. Let's go to next. All right, app overview. You finish all the non-optional steps in 5.1. You can continue using the same project and skip this step. Okay, in this uh, series of code labs, you'll be working with the To-Do Notes app. The app allows you to write down tasks to complete and displays them in a list. You can then mark them as complete or not, filter them, or delete them. <clears throat> the app is written in Kotlin, has a few screens, uses Jetpack components, and follows the architecture from a guide to app architecture. By learning how to test this app, you'll be able to test apps that use the same libraries and architecture. Cool. Okay, so to get the code, um, I've already cloned it. Um, so yeah, you can either download it or clone it. I would just clone it um, right there. There's the URL, clone it, and then check out end code lab one. And you can see here, I'm on that branch, end code lab one. Um, okay, take a moment to familiar side familiarize yourself with the following code follow the instructions below this to do starter code has the same testing setup as a brand new project created with android studio all the additional tests and test configuration setup will be covered in these code labs so you can apply the same testing practices to your own android apps <clears throat> step one run the sample app once you've downloaded the to do app open it in android studio and run it it should compile Explore the app by doing the following. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, create a new task. Let's make a new task. Learn.
Okay, what's uh, let's see, learn about mocks and test doubles. All right, save it. All right, cool. <clears throat> now it says click that. Mm. For some reason, there's like an emulator issue. I can't actually click it. There we go. Okay, in the list of tasks, click the title you just created. I did that. Um, uh, check the checkbox. Mark is complete. Okay. Very nice. Uh, go back to the task screen. Open the filter menu. Filter by active and complete. There's the active. There's a completed. Uh, open the navigation drawer. Go to statistics. That math looks right. Go back to the overview screen and then clear completed. Yep, that got rid of it. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. Explore the sample app code. The to do app is based off the popular architecture blue, blueprints, testing, and architecture sample using the reactive architecture version of the sample. The app follows the architecture from a guide to app architecture. It uses view models, fragments, and uh, repository and room. If you're familiar with any of the following below examples, this app has a similar architecture. Uh, I've seen at least two of these, maybe three or four, I don't know. I've never done Udacity. All right, <clears throat> it is more important that you understand the general architecture of the app than have a deep understanding of the logic at any one layer. I understand that. Okay, here's a summary of packages. Uh, I already did this in the last code lab. I'm not going to do it again. All right, in this, <clears throat> in this code lab, you'll learn how to test repositories, view models, fragments using test doubles and dependency injection. Before you dive into what those are, it's important to understand the reasoning that will guide what and how you will write tests. This section covers some best practices of, the, of testing in general as they apply to Android. The testing pyramid. When, you th when thinking about a testing strategy, there are three related testing aspects. Scope, how much, is, how much of the code does the test touch? Test can run on a single method across the entire application or somewhere in between. Speed, how fast does the test run? Test speeds can vary from milliseconds to several minutes. Fidelity, how real world is the test? For example, if part of the code you're testing needs to make a network request, does the test code actually make this network request or does it fake the result? If the test actually talks with the network, this means it has higher fidelity. The trade-off is that the test could take longer to run, could result in errors if the network is down, or could be costly to use. There are inherent trade-offs between these aspects. For example, speed and fidelity are a trade-off. The faster the test, generally, the less fidelity and vice versa. One common way to divide automated tests is into three categories. Unit tests, <coughs> these are highly focused tests that run on a single class usually a single method in that class. If a unit test fails, you can know exactly where in your code the issue is. They have low fidelity since in the real world, your app involves much more than the execution of one method or class. They're fast enough to run every time you change your code. They will often be locally run tests in the test source set. Example, testing single methods in view models and repositories. Integration tests, these tests interact these test the interaction of several classes to make sure they behave as expected. When used together, one way, uh, let's see, one way to structure integration tests is to have them test a single feature, such as the ability to save a task. They test a larger scope of code than unit tests, but are still optimized to run fast versus having full fidelity. They can either run locally or as instrumentation tests, depending on the situation. Example, testing all the functionality of a single fragment and view model pair. End-to-end -end tests. 
uh, test a combination of features working together. They test large portions of the app, simulate real usage closely, and therefore are usually slow. They have the highest fidelity and tell you that your application works as a whole. By and large, these tests will be instrumentation tests in the Android test source set. Example, starting up the entire app and testing a few features together. The suggested proportion of these tests is often represented by a pyramid. The vast majority of tests will be unit tests. And then, okay, so 70% unit tests, 20% integration, 10% end-to-end. -end. All right, check out the fundamentals of testing in Android documentation for a deeper dive into these concepts and how they map to Android. All right. <clears throat> Architecture and testing. You probably, your ability to test your app at all the different levels of the testing pyramid is inherently tied to your app's architecture. For example, an extremely poorly architected app might put all of its logic inside one method. That would be dangerous. Uh, you might be able to write an end-to-end -end test for this since these tests uh, tend, since these tests tend to test large portions of the app. But what about your what about writing unit or integration tests? With all the code in one place, it's hard to test just the code related to a single unit or feature. A better approach would be to break down the application logic into multiple methods and classes, allowing each piece to be tested in isolation. Architecture is a way of div uh, to divide up and organize your code, which allows easier unit and integration testing. The to-do app that you will be testing follows a particular architecture. Uh, yep, I'm familiar with this architecture. In the, this lesson, you'll see how to test parts of the above architecture in proper isolation. First, you'll unit test the repository. Then you'll use a test double in the view model, which is necessary for unit testing and integration testing the view model. Next, you'll learn to write integration tests for the view, fragments and their view models. Finally, you'll learn how to write integration tests that include the navigation component. End-to-end -end testing will be covered in the next lesson. I think they mean the next code lab. All right, let's see, task. Make a fake data source. When you write a unit test for a part of a class, a method, or smaller collection of methods, your goal is to only test the code in that class. Uh, Testing only code in a specific class or classes can be tricky. Let's take a look at an example. Open the default tasks repository class in the main source set. This is the repository for the app and is the class which you will be writing unit tests for next. Let's open that up. Let me close these out. All right, it's the default task repository. Here we go. So I'm getting a red error right here, and I believe that is caused from the dependency for coroutines being out of date. Let's check that, let's see. Yep, right there. Coroutines, let's see, 1.5 and then 1.52 is the latest. So let me update that real quick. Um, One point five two. There we go. That got rid of that annoying red squiggly, those false errors. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Your goal is to test only the code in that class. Yet default tasks repository depends on other classes such as local task data source and remote task data source to function. Another way to say this is that local task data source and remote task data source are dependencies of default tasks repository. So every method in default tasks repository me calls methods on data source classes, which in turn call methods in other classes to save information to a database or communicate to the network. <clears throat> okay, for example, take a look at this method in default tasks repo.
Um, okay, so it's a suspend function. Get tasks. Get tasks. Force update is a boolean. It's false by default. Returns uh, a result which watches or which contains a list of tasks. So if force update is true, uh, update tasks from remote data source. Okay. Um, and then tasks local data source dot get tasks is returned. Hmm. <clears throat> so no matter what, you're getting it from local, but I think this function will update the local. All right, get tasks is one of the most basic calls you might make to your repository. This method includes reading from a SQLite database and making network calls. The call to update tasks from remote data source. Uh, this involves a lot more code than just the repository code. Uh, here are some more specific reasons why testing the repository is hard. You need, to, you need to deal with thinking about creating and managing a database to do even the simplest tests for this repository. This brings up questions like, should this be a local or instrumented test? And if you should be using Android X test to get, simulated, to get a simulated Android environment. Some parts of the code, such as networking code, can take a long time to run or occasionally even fail, creating long running flaky tests. Flaky tests are tests that when run repeatedly on the same code, sometimes pass and sometimes fail. Avoid them when possible. Your, te <clears throat> your test could lose the, their ability to diagnose which code is at fault for a test failure. Your test could start testing non-repository code. So for example, your supposed repository unit test could fail because of an issue in some of the dependent code, such as the database code. <clears throat> All right, test doubles. The solution to this is that when you're testing a repository, don't use real networking or database code, but to instead use a test double. A test double is a version of a class crafted specifically for testing. It is meant to replace the real version of a class in tests. It is similar to how a stunt double is an actor who specializes in stunts and it replaces the real actor for dangerous actions. Here are some types of test doubles. Fake, a test double that has a working implementation of the class, but it's implemented in a way that makes it good for tests but unsuitable for production. Mock, a test double that tracks which of the methods were called. It then passes or fails a test depending on whether its methods were called correctly. Stub, a test double that includes no logic and only returns what you program it to return. A stub repository could be programmed to return uh, certain combinations of tasks from get tasks, for example. <clears throat> Dummy, a test double that is passed around but not use, used, such as if you need to provide it as a parameter. If you had a no-op task repository, it would just implement the task repository with no code in any of the methods. Uh, spy, a test double which also keeps track of some additional information. For example, if you had a spy task repository, it might keep track of the number of times the add ta task method was called. Uh, for more information on test doubles, check out testing on the toilet. Looks like some a blog, a Google blog. Okay. The most common test doubles used are in Android are fakes and mocks. Uh, in this task, you're going to create a fake data source test double to unit test default task tasks repository, deep coupled from the actual data sources. Summary: Unit tests are highly focused tests that usually test a single class. Default task repository is hard to unit test because it has two complicated dependencies tasks local data source and tasks remote data source. To solve this, you will make test doubles to replace task local data source and task remote, tasks remote data source when testing. This allows you to write unit tests which only test, test default tasks repository code. Create the fake data source class. In this step, you're going to create a class called fake data source. I'm going to copy that. 
which is which will be a test double of local data source and remote data source. All right, and the test data source set in the test source set, right click, um, select new package. So we need to make two packages, data and source, okay? And that's in testing. Oh, wait, which one was it? Was it testing? Yep, the test source set. Okay, so not this one, not this. Right here on the com.example. And it was, I already forgot, data source. New package, data, and then make a new one inside data, source. All right, did that. Okay, implement, oh, I created a new class called fake data source inside there. Okay, did that. Implement tasks, tasks data source interface. To be able to use your new class fake data source as a test double, it must be able to replace the other data sources. Those data sources are tasks local data source and tasks remote data source. Okay. Notice how both of these implement task, tasks data source interface. All right, make fake data source uh, implement that interface. I'll select all these functions, click OK. All right, there we go. Uh, <clears throat> All right, we implemented all of them. Okay, implement the get tasks method in fake data source. Uh, fake data source is a specific type, type of test double called a fake. A fake is a test double that has a working implementation of the class, but it's implemented in a way that makes it good for tests but unsuitable for production. Working implementation means that the class will produce realistic output outputs given inputs. For example, your fake data source won't con connect to the network or save anything to a database. Instead, it will just use an in-memory list, which this will work as you might expect. Uh, and that methods to get or save tasks will return expected results, but you can never use this implementation in production because it's not saved to the server nor a database. A fake data source lets you test the code in default tasks repository without needing to rely on a real database or network. Provides a real enough implementation for tests. Change the fake data source constructor to create a var called tasks that is a mutable list of, and it's nullable task. Okay, so we're gonna add this constructor. Okay, this is the list of tasks that fakes being a database or server response. For now, the goal is to test the repository's get tasks method. This calls the data sources get tasks, delete all tasks, and save task methods. Mm. Let me see, okay. For now, the goal is to test the repository's get task method. This calls the data sources get tasks, delete all tasks, and save tasks. Okay. Um, you can see what methods you need to implement by looking at default task repositories, get tasks, and update task from remote data source. Let's look at that. Oh, here it is. <clears throat> Oh, no, let me just go into that code and and look at it. Where was it at again? Okay. Get tasks. Um, let's see, update from, update tasks from a remote data source. 
get tasks on that data source. Okay. Um, oh, I see. Then it deletes all tasks, remote tasks, that data for each. And then saves it. Oh, that's why it's talking about those other. That makes sense now. <clears throat> Familiar, you're, familiarize yourself with the result class in the main code. It's used as the return value for the data sources in repository. It's the main source sets data. It's in the main source sets data package. It is a Kotlin sealed class with three types, success error loading, that represents a state of read-write operations. Let's look at that. Um, success right here. Okay, so this is a result. It's a sealed class. Okay, and then these are data classes. I see, so it has, it's like, it watches basically whatever's in it, an exception, data, or isn't there another one? Error, oh, loading, nothing. Okay. Uh, okay. Those methods implemented for fake data source look like the code below. Yep, I see that. Oh, so we gotta we gotta write these. Um, so, right? I think we have to write these. So let's see, get tasks. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um. You know, let me just grab those imports just so I don't get the wrong import. I'm gonna put that in first. Okay. All right, tasks, this is for delete all tasks. And then what's the last one? Uh, save task. Mm-hmm, okay. <clears throat> I see. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, it's just basically, it's faking, faking the actual, what would the behavior for that, that's cool. All right, task, write a, <clears throat> a test using dependency injection. Wait, did I finish everything? Yeah, I did, okay. In this step, you're going to use a technique called manual dependency injection so that you can use fake test double, the fake test double you just created. The main issue is that you have a fake data source, but it's unclear how you use it in the tests. It needs to replace the task's remote data source and the task's local data source, but only in tests. But the task's remote data source and tasks local data source are dependencies of default tasks repositories meaning that default tasks repositories requires or depends on these classes to run right now the dependencies are constructed in the init method of default tasks repositories yep right there you can see uh, tasks remote data source task local data source yep Okay, because you're creating and assigning task local data source and task remote data source inside default task repository, they are essentially hard coded. There's no way to swap in your test double. When you want, what you want to do instead is provide these data sources to the class instead of hard coding them. Providing dependencies is known as dependency injection. There are different ways to provide dependencies that, uh, and therefore different types of dependency injection. 
<clears throat> constructor dependency, dependency injection allows you to swap in the test double by passing it into the constructor. Uh, to learn more about dependency injection on Android, check out documentation here. Notably, this cold app covers manual dependency injection that you do yourself. For complicated apps, there are libraries that help with dependency injection, such as Dagger, which you can learn more about in the documentation and with this code lab. Step one, use constructor dependency injection in the default tasks repository. Change the default tasks uh, repositories constructor from uh, taking in, in an application to taking in both data sources and the coroutine dispatcher. Um, okay. Default task repository. So we got to replace that uh, to take the other things in its constructor. So that was a private constructor, and this is not a private constructor. And let's. This is in default tasks repository. So we change this to that, and then we get rid of this. We don't need those. And then we can get rid of this whole init. Right? Because the database is just for that. So yeah, we can get rid of this whole init, I think, as well. And this companion object. Let's double check, make sure that's right. Um, let's see. It says remove the init method. Yep. Delete those variables. Yep. Did that. Uh, update the get repository method to use the new constructor. Oh, wait. Maybe I did too much. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to command Z. Okay. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Oh no, did I, I feel like I, I might have got rid of too much. Mm. All right, let me just command Z. Let me go back a little bit. Okay. For sure. Let's see what it says. Okay, because you pass in the dependencies, remove the init method. You no longer need to create the dependencies. Also delete the old instance variables because you're defining them in the constructor. So, okay, get rid of init. It says. And then get rid of these variables. And then update the get repository method to use the new constructor. Okay. This is in the companion object. Mm. I'm just going to copy this whole function. All right. Ah, there we go. Um, I don't know why, I feel like there should be an error right here. This is a class name. And that takes an object of that type. Did I do something wrong here?
Hmm. <clears throat> it says you're not using constructor dependency injection. Um, you know, that's going to bother me. I, to me, this should not work. Let me do a clean and build. Tasks remote data source right here. Oh, maybe because it's an object. It works. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I think that's why, because it's an object, it works. That works. It's not a class. That makes sense. All right. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Um, all right, you're now using <clears throat> constructive dependency injection. Step two, use your fake data source in your tests. Now that your code is using constructive dependency injection, you can use your fake data source to test your default tasks repository. Right click on the default task repository class and select generate and select test. Um, Add the member variables. Okay, so we need to make a test, default task repository test. Go to generate test, default task repository test, looks good. Um, I'm just gonna do okay. And that goes in, where does it go in? Right, test source that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. At the top of the test, add the member variables below to represent data in your fake data sources. Okay. All right, create three variables, <clears throat> fake data source member variables, one for each data source for your repository and a variable for the default tasks repository, which you will test. Okay. Make a method to set up and initialize a testable default tasks repository. This method, or this default tasks repository will use your test double fake data source. All right, create a method called create repository, annotate it with app before, create your fake data sources using the remote tasks and local tasks list, <clears throat> instantiate your tasks repo repository using the fake, the two fake data sources you just created and dispatchers unconfined. Here's what the final method looks like. Okay, let's grab that. Grab these imports, dispatchers, import. Okay. Uh, let's see, what does this to do say? Dis unconfined should be replaced with dispatchers main. This requires understanding more about coroutines and testing. So we'll keep this as undefined for now. I don't, I don't understand it. So should it be replaced with main? Okay, whatever. Um, okay, write default tasks repository, get tasks, test. Time to write a default task repository test. 
Write a test for the repository's getTask method. Check that when you call getTasks with true, meaning that it should reload from the remote data source, that it returns data from the remote data source as opposed to the local data source. Uh, okay. Oops. Let's import these. Import that. Which, okay, is equal. We want the hamcrest one, not JUnit. Okay, so we're getting task repository get tasks as a result and then assert that tasks data is equal to remote tasks i see you will get an error when you call get tasks uh, it should only be called from a coroutine or another suspend function the coroutine error is expected because get tasks is a suspend function and you need to launch a coroutine to call it for that you need coroutine scope to resolve this error you're going to to need to add some great old dependencies for handling and launching coroutines in your tests. Um, add the required dependencies for testing to the test source or for the test blah blah blah. Um, here we go. We got to add this dependency right here. All right. Go to Gradle. <clears throat> Don't forget to sync. Kotlin X coroutines test is the coroutines test library specifically meant for testing coroutines. To run your tests, use the function run blocking test. This is a function provided by the coroutines test library. It takes in a block of code and then runs this block of code in a special coroutine context which runs synchronously and immediately, meaning uh, actions will occur in a deterministic order. This essentially <clears throat> makes your coroutines run like non-coroutines, so it is meant for testing code. Use run blocking test in your test cases when you're calling a suspend function. You learn more about how run blocking test works and how to test coroutines in the next code lab in the series. Add the experimental API above the class, experimental coroutines API. Okay, and then and then uh, add run blocking to that test. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy the whole test. Mm. Okay, cool. Run your new test and confirm it works. Let's try it. Um, I'm gonna run, there's only one, so this will run. By running all of them, it'll run that one. Let's see, there we go. It passed, awesome. Let's go to the next one. All right. Task, set up a fake repository. You've just seen how to unit test a test repository, how to unit test a repository. In these next steps, you're going to, again, use dependency injection and create another test double. This time to show how to write unit and integration tests for your view models. Unit tests should only test the class or method you're interested in. This is known as testing in isolation where you clearly isolate your unit and only test the code that is part of that unit. So tasks view model test should only test tasks view model code. It should not test in database, network, or the repository classes. Therefore, 
your view models much like you did for your repository, you'll create a fake repository and apply depend dependency injection to use it in your tests. In this task, you'll add dependency injection to the view models. Okay. View model and then fake repository. Okay. <clears throat> create a tasks repository interface. The first step towards using constructor dependency injection is to create a common interface shared between fake and real class. Uh, how does this look in practice? Look at task remote data source, tasks local data source, and fake data source. And notice how they all share the same interface, tasks data source. This allows you to say in the constructor of default tasks repository that you should take in a task tasks data source. Um, is that what we have? Let's see, default. Yeah, that's what we have. So it takes in an interface in the parameters. This is what allows us to swap in our fake data source. Next, make an interface for default tasks repository as you did for the data, for data sources. It needs to include all of the public methods of default tasks repository. Open the repository, right click on the class name, refactor extract interface. Uh, choose to extract a separate file, okay. Refactor, extract interface, uh, separate file. And then it says do all the public, oh that's not public. You can see the lock right here to see if it's public or private. And it says just do the public ones, right? I'm pretty sure. I'll double check. And not the companion. Oh, not the companion. Uh, let me double check. Uh, check all members except the two companion members and a and the private methods. Skip the companion members and private methods. Let me double check. Companion, companion, private, private, private. Okay. Refactor. All right. The inner, the new task repository interface should appear in the data slash source package. And the default task repository now implements that interface we just extracted. Run your app, not the test, to make sure everything is still in working order. Oh, let's add that. Let's change this to app. And run it. An interface. <clears throat> okay. Yep, looks like it's working. Awesome, it works. Create the fake test repository. Now that you have the interface, you can create the default tasks repository test double. In the test source set in data slash source, create the Kotlin file and class fake test repository and extend from tasks repository. Okay, we do this in the test source set, fake task test repository. Okay, so let's go in here and that one, and we'll do uh Fake test repository. Add it. Okay, we made a fake and we have to implement tasks repository. Uh, oh, I named it something else. I named it I default tasks repository. Let me refactor this to to be consistent with the code lab. 
uh, what, what was it? It was tasks repository. Okay. There we go. Let's implement all these. All right, now let's look at this. Okay, I did all that. Implement the fake test repository methods. Um, you now have a fake test repository class with not implemented methods. Similar to how you implemented fake data source, the fake test repository will be backed by a data structure instead of dealing with a complicated mediation between local and remote data sources. Note that your fake test repository doesn't use fake data source or anything like that. It just needs to return realistic fake outputs given inputs. <clears throat> You'll use a linked hash map to store the list of tasks and a mutable live data for your observable tasks. Okay, in fake test repository, you uh, let's see, add a linked hash map variable representing the current list of tasks and a mutable live data for your observable tasks. Okay. Add these two. All right, got that. Implement the following methods. Get tasks. This method should take the task service data and turn it into a list using task service data that values uh, dot to list okay and then return that as success refresh tasks okay let me grab that first one Result, it's wrapped in success, and we grab that hash map, values to list. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, refresh task, update the value of, of observable tasks to be what is returned by get tasks. Refresh tasks, update the value of observable tasks to be, okay. Uh, refresh tasks, I see. Okay, yeah, so we're just that observable. We're updating it by calling get tasks. Okay. And then observe task. Create a coroutine using run blocking and run refresh tasks, then returns observable tasks. All right, run blocking. Okay. Let's import that. Okay. Run blocking versus run blocking test. For your test double, you use run blocking. Run blocking, which is cl a closer simulation of what a real implementation of the repository would do, and it's preferable for fakes so that their behavior more closely matches the real implementation. When you're in test classes, meaning classes with uh, annotated with test, Use run blocking test to get deterministic behavior. Okay. Below is the code for those methods. Uh, complete task. I don't think I grabbed that one, did I? I didn't do that. One, two, three. Nope. Complete task. Where's that? Wait, did I? Did I do the right ones? Refresh tasks, observe tasks and get tasks yeah okay um what's the last one complete task okay add a method for testing to add tasks 
When testing, it is better to have some tasks already in your repository. You could call save tasks several times, but to make it easier, add a helper method specifically for tests that lets you add tasks. Add the add tasks, tasks method, which takes in a var arg of tasks, adds each to the hash map, and then refreshes the tasks. Okay, so here's a little helper function. Um, I'm going to put that at the top. All right, now we got to use this in our tests. Okay. <clears throat> task, use the fake repository inside a view model. In this task, you use a fake class inside of a view model. Use constructor dependency injection <clears throat> to take in two data sources via constructor dependency injection uh, by adding a tasks repository variable to the tasks view models constructor. This process is a little different with view models because you don't construct them directly. For example, uh, you don't do that. Um, or wait, you do. Let me see. As in the code above, you're using view models property delegate, which creates the view model. To change how the view model is constructed, you'll need to use view model provider factory. If you're not familiar with factory, you can learn about it here. Okay, make and use view model factory and tasks view model. You can start with updating the classes and test related to the task screen. Okay, open tasks view model. We gotta replace. What do we gotta replace? Um, okay, like all of that tasks view model. And we're basically replacing this. Yep. I'll get rid of that. And then we gotta import this. All right. Okay, since you changed the constructor, you now need to use a factory to construct tasks view model. For your convenience, you can put the factory class in the same file as tasks view model, but you could also put it in its own file. At the bottom of the tasks view model file, outside the class, add a tasks view model factory. Okay. All right, add this factory to the bottom outside the class. Okay, and then we have to update our fragment to use that factory. This is a standard way to change how view models are constructed. Not that you have the factory, use it wherever you construct your view model. Update tasks fragment to use the factory. All right, tasks fragment. Um, here's the view model. Now we got to use the factory. Okay. Run your app and make sure everything is still working. All right, let's do that. Run it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, looks like it's working. I'm gonna leave it there. All right, use fake test repository inside ta tasks view model test. Now, instead of using real repository in your view model test, you can use the fake repository. Open tasks view model test. It's under the tasks folder in the test source set. Add fake, a fake repository property to the tasks view model test. Okay, tasks view model test. Okay, update the setup view model method to take a fake repository with three tasks and then construct the tasks view model in this repository. No, there's no need to use a delegate property or a view model provider. You can just directly construct the view model and unit tests. Okay, so here's our updated before function. Uh, 
Is there a view model? Okay, so it makes that fake repository, grabs the tasks, add add them. There's that helper function, okay. And then makes the tasks view model. Okay, cool. Good there. Because you're no longer using Android X test out get application context code, you can now remove run with Android J Unit 4 annotation. Run your tests and make sure they still work. Alright. Oh, we got to run the tests. Uh, by using constructor dependency injection, you'd now remove default test repository as a dependency and replace it with fake test repository in, in tests. Okay. Also update task detail fragment <clears throat> and view model. There we go. The test passed. Awesome. All right, we have to update task detail fragment and the view model. Open task detail view model. Okay. And we have to replace that with this. Okay, get rid of that. Okay, now we need that factory method for that one. Okay, now we gotta use, the fragment has to use that factory instead of the delegate. Uh, let's test detail fragment. All right, cool. Run your code and make sure everything is working. To avoid building a separate factory for each view model, check out. Uh, yeah, I've seen that before. You can make one factory for all view models. It's a lot nicer. Uh, you're now able to use a fake test repository instead of the real repository in tasks fragments. Okay, we gotta run the code though. Make sure it works. All uh, right. Did it install? Okay. All right, looks like it's working. All right, launch a fragment from a test. Next, you'll write integration tests to test your fragment and view model interactions you'll find you'll find out if your view model code appropriately updates your ui to do this uh, use service locator pattern and the espresso and makito libraries integration tests are the interaction of several classes to make sure they behave as expected when used together these tests can be run either locally or as instrumentation tests. In your case, you'll be taking each fragment and writing integration tests for the fragment and view model to test the main feature, features of the fragment. Okay. Um, step one, add Gradle dependencies. Add the following Gradle dependencies. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Okay. Add these dependencies, where'd it go?
Um, <laughs> what doesn't it like? Fragment version. I don't know what fragment, I don't have it. So let's see, I'm just gonna put 1.0.0 .0 and then update to latest 1.4.1, try again. There we go. Um, okay, added them. All right, these dependencies include JUnit, which is ne necessary for writing basic test statements, Android X test core, core Android X test library, Kotlin's coroutines test, this coroutines testing library, Android X fragment, fragment testing, test library for creating fragments and tests and changing their state. Since you'll be using these libraries in your Android test source set, use Android test implementation to add them. Okay. Make a task detail fragment test class. Task detail fragment shows information about a single task. Okay, you'll start by writing a fragment test for the task detail fragment. Since it has been fairly basic functionality compared to other fragments. Open task detail fragment, generate a test, as you've done before, accept the default choices and put it in Android test source set, not the test source set. Okay, so we're doing detail. Okay. Generate uh, test and okay, and it goes in Android test. Add it. Yep. Why put this test in the Android test source set? Fragments, at least the ones you'll be testing, are visual and make up the user interface. Because of this, when testing them, it helps to render them on a screen as they would when the app is running. Thus, when testing fragments, usually write instrumented tests which live in the Android test source set. As a general rule of thumb, if you're testing something visual, run it as an instrumentation test. Okay, add the following annotations to task detail fragment class okay it's a medium test unit four okay let's add these all right the purpose of these annotations is medium test marks the test as a medium runtime integration test versus small test, unit test, and large test, end to end tests. This help you, helps you group and choose which size of test to run. Run with Android J Unit 4 using any class using Android X test. Okay. Launch a fragment from a test. In this task, you're going to launch test detail fragment using Android X testing library. Fragment scenario is a class from Android X test that wraps around a fragment and gives you direct control over the fragment's life cycle for testing. To write tests for fragments, you create a fragment scenario for the fragment you're testing. Okay, let's grab that test. All right, import these. All right. This code above creates a task, creates a bundle, which represents the fragment arguments for the task, and then they get passed into the fragment. A launch fragment and container function creates a fragment scenario with this bundle and a theme. All right, note, supplying the theme is necessary because fragments usually get their theming from their parent activity. When using fragment scenario, your fragment is launched using a generic empty activity so that it's properly isolated from activity code. You're just testing the fragment code, not the associated activity. The theme parameter allows you to supply the correct theme. Okay. This is not a finished test yet because it's not asserting anything. For now, run the test and observe what happens. This is an instrumented test, so make sure your emulator or device is visible. Run the test. Let's see. Let's run this test. Oops.
Uh, let's see what happens. It's building. It definitely runs slower than unit tests. Oh, there's an error. Uh, oh, I've seen this error before. Um, it has to do with, uh, let's see. A few things should happen. First, because it's an instrument test, the test will run on your physical device. It should launch the fragment Notice how it doesn't navigate through any other fragment or have any menus associated with it. It's just a fragment. Okay, so that's not what happened. So we're not able to build. Let me close this for now. Okay. Um, let me... Let's go to Git. It's in this Gradle, one of these Gradles. I think it's this Gradle. And then there's a way to show diff. No, I want to see. Let's see. Compare with branch. Um, it'd be end of code lab two, right? Okay. Yeah, so we need to add. Okay, that's end of code lab two. This is my local. I want to add that. I think that's the issue. Okay, let's just do that and resync. Okay, now let's run that test again and see what. Okay. Okay, it briefly displayed there, but it did pass. Test to see the results, add thread sleep. Let's, let's add that. Um, where do we add it? Right here? And then I'll sleep it for two seconds. Yep. Alright, that's, that's a lot nicer. Okay. Okay, cool. Your test both needs to load up the task detail fragment, which you've done, and assert the data was loaded correctly. Why is there no data? This is because you created a task, but you didn't save it to the repository. Okay, you have this fake test repository, but you need some way to replace your real repository with your fake one for your fragment. You'll do this next. Okay. All right, task, make a service locator. In this task, you'll provide, um, you'll provide a fake repository to your fragment using a service locator. This will allow you to write your fragment and view model integration tests. You can't use constructor dependency injection here as you did before. When you need to provide a dependency to the view model or repository, constructor dependency injection requires that you construct the classes Fragments and activities are examples of classes that don't construct and generally don't have access to the constructor of. Uh, since you don't construct the fragment, you can't use constructor dependency injection to swap the repository test double um, to the fragment. Instead, use service locator pattern. The service locator pattern is an alternative to dependency injection. It involves creating a singleton class called the service locator. 
whose purpose is to provide dependencies both for regular and test code. In the regular app code, the main source set, all of these dependencies are the regular app dependencies. For tests, you modify the service locator to provide test double versions of the dependencies. All right. For this code lab, do the following. Create a service locator class that is able to construct and store a repository. By default, it constructs a normal repository. Refactor your code so that when you need a repository, use a service locator. In your testing class, call a method on the service locator, which swaps out the normal repository with your test double. You can learn more about service locators in Android in the documentation. All right, create the service locator. Let's make the service locator class. It'll live in the main source set with the rest of the app code because it's used by the main application code. Note service locator is a singleton. So use the Kotlin object keyword for the cat class. Create the service locator Kotlin file in the top level of the main source set. Okay. Top level of the main source set. And it's an object. Add. All right. Did it. All right. Made it an object. Create a database and a repository instance variables. Set both to null. Annotate the repository with volatile because it could get used by multiple threads. Volatile is explained in detail here. I know what volatile means. Uh, if you don't, you should read that. All right. Right now, the only thing your service locator needs to do is know how to return a task to repository. It'll return a pre-existing default tasks repository or make a new default task rep repository if needed. Define the following functions. Provide tasks repository. Either provide an already existing repository or create a new one. This method should be synchronized on this to avoid in situations with multiple threads running ever accidentally creating two repository instances. Uh, create task repository, code for creating a new repository will call create tasks local data source and create a new tasks remote data source. Create tasks task local data source code for creating a new local data source will create, we'll call create database, create database code for creating a new, a new database. All right, here's the code. All right, let's start importing some things. Okay, let's let's go over this. All right, provide tasks repository takes context returns tasks repository marked as volatile. Uh, it's synchronized. The lock is this. All right, and it returns tasks repository. If it's not null, otherwise, if it is null, it creates tasks repository. Okay, and and returns it. Create task repository. Okay, and veil, new repo, default task repository takes a remote data source object and then calls create tasks local data source, which creates a task or returns a task data source, gets the database. If it's if it's null, then it creates the database and then it so it returns task local data source using the task data access object. Okay. All right, this is pretty straightforward. So we just got to use this function, the only public function. Um, okay. Use service locator in application. 
you're going to make a change to your main application code, not your test, so that you create the repository in one place, your service locator. It's important that you only ever make one instance of the repository class. To ensure this, you'll use service locator in the to do application class. At the top level of your package hierarchy, open the to-do application and create a val for your repository and assign it a repository that is obtained using service locator provide. Okay, so we need this in our to-do application. Okay. Now that you have created a repository in the application, you can remove the old get repository method in default tasks repository. Open default task repository and delete the companion object. The whole companion object? Oh, oh yeah, because now we're uh, doing it differently. Uh, default tasks repository. Um, get rid of that whole thing. <coughs> awesome. <coughs> Okay, delete this companion object, delete, did that. Now everywhere you were using Git repository, use the application's task repository instead. This ensures that instead of making the repository directly, you are getting whatever the repository, whatever repository the service locator provided. Open task, detail fragment, and find the call to Git repository. Task detail fragment, let's go there. Can't find that anymore. Okay, now we got it. And then we cast that. There we go. And that's how we ask access task repository. Uh, do the same for task tasks fragment. Tasks fragment. Okay. Oops, I did. Okay. Uh, for to statistics view model and add edit view model, update the code that requires the repository you to use. Um, oops. Uh, okay, so we need to use the repository from the application for statistics and add edit. So statistics. Is this in the view model? Yeah, it's in the view model. Okay, so statistics view model. And then what was the other one? Add, edit, add, edit, add, edit. There we go. All right, run your application, not the test. Since you only refactored, the app should run the same without issue. Yeah, that's famous last words. You only refactored, it should run without issue. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Yep, looks like it works. Okay, let's close this. Create fake have a fake test repository in the test source set. You cannot share test classes between test and Android test source sets by default. So you need to make a duplicate fake test repository class in the Android test source set and call it fake Android test repository. If you'd like to share files between test and Android test source sets, you can configure via Gradle a share test folder as seen in architecture blueprints prints reactive sample. Right click Android test source set and make a data source package. Make a new class in this source package called fake Android test repository. Okay. So data source and Android test. Oops. New package. 
data. And then new package source. And then new, uh, get out of here. Nope, I didn't want to do that. New Kotlin class file. Okay. Copy the, copy the following code to that class. Oh, that's a lot of code. All right, let's grab it all. Okay. Prepare your service locator for tests. Okay, time to use a service locator to swap and test doubles while testing. To do that, you need to add some code to your service locator code. Open service locator. Mark the setter for task repository as visible for testing. Task repository. Okay. Whether you run your test alone or in a group of tests, your test should run exactly the same. What this means is that your test should have no behavior that is dependent on one another, which means avoiding sharing objects between tests. Since service locator is a singleton, it has the possibility of being actually accidentally shared between tests. To help avoid this, create a method that properly resets service locator state between tests. Important, one downside of using service locator is that it is shared, it's a shared singleton. In addition to needing to reset the state of the service locator whenever the tests finish, you cannot run tests in parallel. This doesn't happen when you use dependency injection, which is one of the reasons to prefer constructor dependency injection when you can use it. Okay. Add an instance variable called lock with the any value to service locator. Okay. Add a testing specific method called reset repository, which clears out the database and sets both the repository and database to null. Okay, so these are only going to be visible for testing. Okay. All right, use your service locator. In this step, you use, you use the service locator. Open task detail fragment test, declare a late init task repository variable, and set up, uh, add a setup and teardown methods to set up a fake test, Android test repository before each test and clean it up after each test. So here's our before after, and this is in task, task detail fragment test. Task detail fragment test. All right. Okay, this looks a lot better. So this will get called after every test, and this gets called before every test. Okay. All right. Okay, wrap the function body of active task details displayed UI in run blocking test, save active tasks task in the repository before launching the fragment. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to grab this whole thing. Uh, 
and you add that to the I'm going to add it to the class the experimental coroutines okay annotate the whole class when finished the code will look like this run it and let's see do I have a I want to do a thread uh, for two seconds There we go. Looks good. Um, awesome. Uh, you see? All right, next. <clears throat> so in this step, you'll use Espresso UI testing library to complete your first integration test. You have structured your code so you can add tests with assertions to your UI. To do that, you'll use Espresso testing library. Espresso helps you with helps you interact with views like clicking buttons, sliding a bar, scrolling to a screen. Assert that certain views are on screen and are in, certain, are in a certain state. All right, note griddle dependency. That's already in the code. Okay, the core espresso dependency is included by default when you make a new Android project that contains the basic testing code for most views and interactions on them. All right, turn off animations. I've already done this on my emulator. You should go through that as well. Uh, look at an espresso test. Before you write an espresso test, take a look at some espresso code. Uh, on view with ID, perform click, check uh, that it matches is checked, okay. What the statement does is find the checkbox with that ID, clicks it, then asserts that it's checked. All right, I'm familiar with all that. Open task detail fragment test, update the active tasks, task details displayed UI test. So let's update our test to this. That's in task detail fragment. All right, matches, we want to use espresso matches. not we want to use let's use hamcrest matchers okay here are the imports I've already done that everything after um, the then comment uses espresso examine the test structure and use and use of with ID and check that to check to make assertions about how the detail page should look. Run the test and confirm it passes. I'm going to run the test. There we go, it passed. Okay. Closing that. Test. Now write a test yourself. Create a new test called that. All right, I'm gonna just copy this over. This is a new test. Okay, it's run blocking test. Look at the previous test, complete this test, run and confirm the test passes, then finish completed test details displayed in UI should look like this code.
Okay. So this is for completed. Completed task, we add that to the repository. Um, we launch our fragment and then, all right, now let's run this test. And it passed, awesome. Okay, using Makito to write navigation tests. In the last step, you'll learn how to, use, how to test navigation component using a different type of test double called a mock and the testing library Makito. In this code lab, you've used a test double called a fake. Fakes are one of many types of test doubles which test double. Which test double should you use for testing navigation component? Think about how navigation happens. Imagine pressing one of the tasks in the task fragment to navigate to a task detail screen. Okay, here's the code in task fragment uh, that navigates to a task detail screen when it is pressed. Okay, so it gets the controller and calls navigate with this action. This action is gotten from task fragment directions, action task fragment to details fragment. Okay, so it's a task ID. Okay, the navigation occurs because of a call to the navigate method. If you needed to write an assert statement, there isn't a straightforward way to test whether you've navigated to task detail fragment. Navigating is a complicated action that doesn't result in a clear output or state change beyond initializing task detail fragment. What you can assert is that the navigate method was called, okay, with the correct action parameter. <clears throat> this is exactly what a mock test double does. It checks whether the specific methods were called. Mockito is a framework for making test doubles. While the word mock is used in the API and name, it is not for just making mocks. It also makes, it can also make stubs and spies. You'll use Mockito to make a mock navigation controller which can assert that the navigate method was called correctly add gradle dependencies add these dependencies okay let's sync it uh, we're probably gonna have to get the correct versions. I'll start with 1.0 and then change it to the updated one. Try again. And that worked. Do we have a Dex Maker version? Let's look at the other. Okay, we do have a Dex Maker version. Oops, uh, I pasted that there. I mean revert that. Okay. We have a Dex Maker version. Okay. Uh Makito Core, this is the Makito dependency. Dex Maker Makito. This library is required to use Makito in an Android project. Makito needs to generate classes at runtime. On Android, this is done using Dex bytecode. So this library enables Makito to generate objects during runtime on Android. Uh, and then Espresso Contrib, this library is made up of external contributions, hence the name, which contain testing code for advanced views such as date picker, recycler view. It also contains accessibility checks and class called counting idling resource that is covered later. Step two, create tasks fragment test. Open tasks fragment, right click on tasks fragment class and generate a test um, in the Android test source set. Okay, tasks fragment test. Tasks, let's open main. Tasks fragment, and we're gonna make a tasks fragment test. Generate test. Tasks fragment test. Okay. 
and we're putting it in Android test. Add that. Okay, it should look like this. I'm just gonna copy that whole thing. Import all this. Okay, and it cannot find experimental coroutines API, but it can find it in test. So it's missing. Uh, it's missing that something's available in test implementation, but not in Android test. Um, oops. I'm going to copy this, put this right here, and change that to Android test implementation. I believe it's in this one. I'm going to clear some of these out. Nope, that was not it. Okay, um, let's just Google it, I guess. There's some dependency we're supposed to grab. No. Oh wait, maybe that was it. I think that might be it. Let's look at an older This is in task fragment test uh, Is it in task detail Oh, it, it lost it on this one as well So adding those dependencies screwed it up So it's it's not that I need a new one. I just got to figure out why it's breaking there must be a conflict on something. Let me, let's look at the um, diff on that branch and the final branch and code lab two. All right, here's my local one. All right, so it should be debug implementation. You know, I'm just going to make this simple. I'm going to grab every since I know that works, um, the, uh, the branch that we're supposed to use, I'm just going to grab 
everything from the branch that I know works and then I have to do the same for the other uh, the other Gradle file because that's the one that has the versions um, so git compare with branch and code lab 2 I'll get all of that over okay let's sync it now And we had to do that one thing with the coroutines version. Where was that? That was right. Where's the coroutines version? Right here. Change that to 152, coroutines version, 152. Now sync it. Okay, there we go. Now it works. Okay. All right, going back uh, to test detail fragment. All right. Um, Okay, let's see. Task detail for tasks fragment. Let's go back there. Task fragment test. Um, clean up initialize repository. Okay, this code looks similar to the task detail fragment code you wrote. It sets up and tears down a fake test repository. Add a navigation test to test. When you click on a task in the task list, it takes you to the correct task detail fragment. Add the test, click task, navigate to detail fragment one. Okay. Um, Okay, using Makito's mock function to create a mock. Um, where do we put that val? I'm gonna say right here. Okay. Next, you'll need to associate your nav controller with the fragment on fragment lets you call methods on the fragment itself. Make your new mock the fragment's nav controller. Okay. Add the code to to click on the item in the recycler view that has the text title one. Okay. Okay, did that. Recycler view actions is part of Espresso, Espresso Contrib library. It lets you perform Espresso actions on a Recycler view. Uh, verify that navigate was called with the correct argument. Where is that? Right here. Okay. Am I missing something? 
Yes, I am. Okay. Makito's verified method is what makes this a mock. You'll be able to confirm the mocked nav controller called a specific method navigate with a parameter action tasks fragment to detail to task detail fragment with the ID of ID one. The completed test looks like this. All right, that's what I have. Let's run the test, make sure it works. <clears throat> Oh, there we go. Uh, let's, yep, it passed. Cool. In this navigation, you can use Makito to create a nav controller mock, attach the mocked nav controller to the fragment, verify that navigate was called with the correct action and parameter. Step three, optional, right click add task button, navigate to add edit fragment to see if you can Write a navigation test. Try this task. Write the test, click add task button, navigate to add edit fragment, which checks that if you click on the fab, you navigate to add edit task. Task. The answer is below. I'm just gonna put it in and then we'll look at it. Context, uh, where do we want it from? I'm gonna say that one. Let's run that. It's task fragment, nav controller, scenario on fragment, pass that nav controller. We mock the nav controller on view with that fab, click it, and then verify nav controller. That function navigate is called on it with task fragment directions, action task fragment to add, edit task fragment, the task ID get application context, get string. So it, it making sure uh, it was called with that new task, okay. And you can see here it passed. All right, so that solution code. All right, well, we don't need the solution. We figured it out, awesome. That was really helpful, really quite a long uh, code lab. This code lab covering how to set up manual dependency injection, a service locator, and how to use fakes and mocks in your Ant Kotlin apps. Okay. In particular, what you want to test, your testing strategy, determine the kinds of tests you're going to implement for your app, unit tests are focused and fast, integration tests verify action between parts of your program, end to end tests verify features, have the highest fidelity, are often instrumented and may take longer to run. The architecture of your app influences how hard it is to test. To isolate parts of your app for testing, you can use test doubles. Test double is a version of a class crafted specifically for testing. For example, you fake getting data from a database or the internet. Use dependency injection to replace a real class with a testing class. For example, a repository or a networking layer. Use instrumented test Android test to launch UI components. When you can't use constructor dependency injection, for example, to launch a fragment, you can use a service locator. The service locator pattern is an alternative to dependency injection. It all involves creating a singleton class. Uh, I think it's an alternative to constructor, constructor creation. Um, I think service locator is like manual dependency injection. Um, class, let's see class called service locator whose purpose is to provide dependencies for both the regular and test code. All right. And there's a bunch of learn more stuff. Cool. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This is a long one, but it was really good, uh, really good collab. Thanks.